when God created the heavens and the earth, at every point along the way as He made light and stars and mountains and oceans and plants and animals and people, God would take a step back, look at it, and say, it is good. And then when He was done with the entire project, He surveyed the whole, whole thing and He said, it is very good. And it was for about half a chapter until the first man, Adam, met and named all the animals and noticed that among all the creatures on earth, he was the only one that there was only one of. And although pets are fine and some of us love our pets as much as we love our spouse or our kids, Adam realized that something was missing. He's surrounded by all the bounty of the universe and yet he had this emptiness in his heart. Adam was lonely, and for the first time in all of creation, there was something that was not good, and God named it. He said, it is not good for a person to be alone, and it's not. It's not. God created human beings. God created us to be together. It is not good for a person to be alone, and it's not. And that's why God has us born into families. You know, God could have made us reproduce by mitosis. We could eat a whole bunch of stuff, kind of swell up really big, and then <laughs> split in half, and there'd be two new people. But that's not what God did with us. He designed it so that a man and a woman would get together, pledge to each other in marriage, that they would make love, which is the most intimate action possible because it's not only physical, it's also emotional and spiritual, that these two people would stay together, stick together, serve each other through nine months of pregnancy, all the hours of labor and delivery to bring this new person into the family, and then they get to feed, clothe, and shelter the little parasite for 15 or 20 or 30 years, <laughs> teaching them everything they need to know to be able to get out on their own join together with someone else and start their own family. God created us to be together in our own family first, our own family first, but then, but then in ever-widening circles with our friends and our neighbors and our community and our tribe and our nation and, and ideally to be together with the entire world, all people everywhere. God created us to be together, and when we ignore that or sidestep it and spend too much time alone or focus on projects instead of people or unnecessarily substitute virtual communication with re for real face-to-face -face relationships, as can happen with social media and Zoom, when we ignore the fact that God created us to be together, we, we suffer, our families suffer. Our friends and community suffer, and society suffers. Most serial killers and mass shooters are not white supremacists, domestic terrorists, or gun nuts. They're loners who don't have anyone in close enough relationship with them to suggest that maybe hurting or shooting or killing people is a bad idea. Most people who attempt or succeed at suicide do so because they feel alone, abandoned, helpless, and or hopeless. And for many of us, the scariest part of the pandemic was not that we might die from the disease, but how long is it going to be before we get to see our family or our friends or anybody ever else again? It's not good for a person to be alone. God created us to be together. In traditional societies where people live in intergenerational family and tribal villages, they don't have mass murders or suicides because the network of relationships tends to incorporate everyone into the community. It fosters emotional health by giving them a role and a sense of belonging, and it prevents people from feeling so bad and so alone that they want to hurt themselves or other people in our in society, however, few families live together in the same town, much less the same household. Jobs and circumstances move us away from family and friends and from wherever we might call home. 
online banking, Amazon.com, social media, email, text messages, and Zoom meetings can let us go for days without seeing a real live human being in the flesh or having an actual conversation with anybody. Add to that that we live in Florida where almost everybody is from someplace else and may not stay here long, and it's easy, too easy for persons to be alone. And if we don't deliberately choose to get together with other people, we will be alone. It's not good for a person to be alone. God created us to be together. And God created a venue, a place, a setting, a group, a tribe, a family for us to be together with. That would be His family, the church. And for those of us who live around here, that would be this parish family, the Church of the Messiah. It's not good for a person to be alone. God created us to be together. And the Messiah family is God's gift to you so you don't have to be alone in a society that's all segmented, in a state where people bounce in and out, and an age of e-commerce and self-service checkout. This parish family is an island of face-to-face friendship in an ocean of social media posts, text messages, spam, and robocalls about your car's extended warranty. (laughs) You say, but wait a minute, look around this room. All these different people, every size and shape and color and condition and culture, what could possibly bring us together? Well, the Bible lessons today offer some insight. Starting with Psalm 133, it opens, Oh, how good and pleasant it is when brethren, and that would include sister as well, live together in unity. Now, notice it says unity, not uniformity. Unity is agreeing on what we believe is most important. Uniformity means we're all alike in every way. And look around the room. We are not at all in uniformity and by any stretch of the imagination. We're all sizes and shapes and colors and conditions and cultures. We wear different clothes, drive different vehicles, live in different neighborhoods and different kinds of housing, listen to different music, vote for different candidates, and cheer for different sports teams. And yet, here we are together, not in uniformity, but in unity. And in unity about what? Well, that would be Jesus. And even even though we're in unity about Jesus, we're not even in uniformity about Him. Some of us are here because we love Jesus as our Savior and friend. Some of us are here because we admire stuff that He said and did. Some of us are here because we like the music and the art and the architecture. Some of us are here because this parish family has become our closest family. Some of us are here because we love someone who's here for one of those other reasons. Some of us are here because somebody who's here for one of those other reasons dragged us here. And some of us are here because we're tired of being alone. And we hope that this parish family might become our family. We aren't in uniformity about Jesus, and we aren't in uniformity about how to relate to Him. That's why we have five different services at five different times, in two different languages, in five different styles, in two different rooms. We are not in uniformity, but we are in unity. And what has us in unity across all of our differences is Jesus because there's certainly no other reason all of us would be together in the same room ever. But oh, how good and pleasant it is when we are. My life is so much richer because each of you is in it. Your friendship, your prayers, your encouragement, your acceptance, your patience, your mercy, your understanding, your insights, your experience, your wisdom, your advice, your correction, your suggestions, your mistakes, your successes, your failures, 
All of those help me heal from what and who has hurt me in the past. All of that helped, all of you helped me grow from who I was and to who I am and to who I'm becoming. And you give me the competence and the confidence to face the storms of life because I know that you and Jesus have my back, even if you or he are asleep in the back of the boat. Because if you and he aren't worried about the storm to, and aren't freaking out or even wake up from the nap, then I don't need to freak out either. Being together with you nudges me towards being a better husband, father, friend, a better human being. Being with you helps me be healthy and helps me grow deeper in faith, hope, and love. Oh, how good and pleasant it is when brothers and sisters live together in unity. And it is. Brothers and sisters, let's not let our lack of uniformity in size, shape, color, condition, culture, economics, politics, theology, worship style, or anything else distract us from the unity that we enjoy in Jesus. The psalm tells us how that works. Verse 2, it's like fine oil upon the head that runs down upon the beard, the beard of Aaron and runs down upon the collar of his robe. Glad I don't have to do his laundry. Like that oil on Aaron's beard, beard, unity lubricates our relationships. It smooths out the rough edges of our personalities and our politics and attitudes and actions. When somebody says or does something that I disagree with or that rubs me the wrong way, unity in Jesus helps me let those things slide, just roll off of me. I don't have to argue, I don't have to be offended, I don't have to try to talk you into agreeing with me about everything because that would be uniformity. Instead, our unity about what's most important, that would be Jesus, is like fine oil upon the head that lubricates and enables us to disagree without being disagreeable and helps us give each other the right to be wrong. What else does unity do for us? Verse 4, it's like the dew of Mount Hermon that falls upon the hills of Zion. Like morning dew does for plants, unity moistens, softens, nourishes our relationships, and helps them grow. Because we know that we're in unity with Jesus, because we, because we know that, we, are also, we all also want the same thing. We want what God wants. We want what's best for you and me and our families and our parish family and our community and the nation and the world. Because we want the same thing and because of that unity, it prompts us to listen to each other's perspectives, to trust each other, to give each other the benefit of the doubt, to be willing to say, you might be right, or even to dare say, I might be wrong. Unity in Jesus, not uniformity about anything, is the key to getting along with people. It lubricates, moistens, softens, nourishes our relationships and helps them grow. And the psalm concludes, for there, in unity, the Lord has ordained the blessing, life forevermore. Life, real life, is measured in our relationships with people, not in stuff, not in money, sex, or power, not in anything else. To be rich in life is to be rich in relationships. It is not good for a person to be alone. God created us to be together. St. Paul weighs in on this truth in his second letter that he sent to his dear friends in Corinth. He writes about their relationship. We have spoken to you freely and opened wide our hearts to you. We are not withholding our affection from you, but you are withholding yours from us. As a fair exchange, and I speak to you as my children, open wide your hearts. Now, for those of you watching us online, if you live a long way away or you have health issues and online is the only practical or safe way for you to be part of the parish family, please keep on. We love you. We want to stay in touch with you. We are glad to continue praying for you and mailing communion to you. 
But if you live somewhere close and have gotten complacent about coming in person because it's easy to watch us on a screen, it's time to open wide your heart and come back and renew your affection and relationships in the Messiah family face to face. Now, for those of you who are here, if you've let the pandemic close your heart to in-person relationships or move you to withhold your affection from the Messiah family or prompt you to drop out of a group or quit serving somewhere in the parish or the community, it's time to open wide your heart and pick that back up. And if you're new here and have not yet plugged into a group or come to a social event or offered yourself as a servant, it's time to do that. It's time for all of us to do that. And there are a bunch of opportunities for us to get together in the next few weeks listed in today's fat bulletin. Not because the parish needs you or your time or your talent or your treasure, but because you need a parish family. It's not good for a person to be alone. God created us to be together, and life is better together.